God's house this morning. Amen. Well, this morning my my sermon title was going to be uh, "Don't Fly Off the Handle," but I knew as soon as I put that, some of y'all be looking at your spouses and some of the men be going home with some black eyes. So I decided not to uh, to use that, and it really wasn't exactly what I was trying to convey. So my sermon title today is uh, Don't Let Your Axe Head Fly Off the Handle. Maybe you've heard that story or maybe you, you say, well, what in the world does, does that have to do with, with church? Well, first of all, who, uh, who here has ever used an, an axe to, to chop a limb? You don't have to chop a whole tree. Who's, who's used an axe before? Man, a lot of folks. A lot of folks. Using uh, an axe is... Uh, it's work, especially if you're chopping down a tree, but it can be work even, even chopping down a, a limb. Um, I have not cut down a whole lot of trees uh, with an axe. Um, actually, I've cut very few trees. I've cut a lot of limbs, but very few trees with an axe. Um, I have worked around uh, woodworking and stuff. I've shared before that when I was a uh, a kid, I had an uncle who lived in, in Tate County and from basically all over North Mississippi, he always had us working on doing something. He worked a full-time job, but he had cows, he had, we, we sold hay, we sold firewood, and uh, this morning I was going to talk in particular about my, the way I would help them with the firewood. Um, he would cut the trees down, and of course as a kid, part of my job was of course to help drag the, the limbs out of the way. Uh, and also to go along, you know, you can't just go along and just, just with a chainsaw and just, just cut all different sizes. You want to cut the right length piece of wood to fit in people's wood-burning stove or, or fireplace. So I had a little measuring stick. I think it was some type of, of handle that had been cut off. And my job was to go along, stick it there on the end, and I had a little hatchet. And, man, I thought I was the coolest thing in the world. In my mind, it was just a small axe, and I was as excited as I could be. And, man, when that thing was sharp, you could hit that hit that wood and hit it once this way and once this way, and man, I'd knock just a, a big old a chip out of it. And that way my uncle would come along and he would know that that's wh where the mark was for him to, uh, to cut, to have the right length, and that way we weren't wasting any and we weren't cutting any too short or, or too long. And all I had to do was make sure I wasn't in his way. Now, if he caught me, then I was, I was in trouble. But uh, I really enjoyed that, and I enjoyed that, uh, or I, I learned some things in that, that that, that hatchet had to to stay sharp if it was going to be effective. Um, I don't know what it got used for other times, but sometimes it would get really dull. Man, I'd hit that wood and it just uh, wouldn't do anything. Uh, later, after I got out of high school, I mentioned before, I worked uh, in the logging woods uh, for a short time up in Dixon, Tennessee, where my family moved. And uh, we didn't um, have any, uh, we didn't have big skitters. My cousin didn't believe in, in tearing land up that way. We had a mule. Uh, but we didn't cut trees down with a, uh, an axe there either. We had, a, we had a chainsaw. But if you're out doing that kind of stuff, you always have an axe around. And, uh, you know, through, through my exposure to, to working with an axe and stuff, there's some things, again, that I learned was, A, that axe always needs to be uh, sharp. Uh, it required a lot of work and effort. And uh, one of the things I found out is I never really understood that concept. And once I found out what the way that axe head was on that handle, that it could actually fly off. And for us, we always had a, I don't know if we ever owned an, a new axe, but we had a really old axe. And uh, at the house as a kid, I know if we got it out messing with it, after four or five swings, you had to take it and, and tamp that dude back down with that head to go back on there because that, that axe head will actually fly off. And, uh, you know, ever since I figured that out, I'm, I'm a nervous wreck when someone goes to swinging an axe. I like to make sure I'm, I'm back uh, behind them. But it is, uh, it's a real thing. An axe head, that, that sermon title this morning, Don't Let Your Axe Head Fly Off, it's a real thing. It can happen. Axe head can fly off of the handle. But this morning, we're going to be reading in, in 2 Kings, and, and we're going to read a story about that, and we're going to learn some things this morning um, from a man who had his uh, axe head fly off. So 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. It says, Now the sons of the prophets said to Elisha, Behold, now the place before you where we are living is too limited for us. Please let us go to the Jordan and each of us take from there a beam and let us make a place there for ourselves where we may live. So he said, Go. 
Then one said, please be willing to go with your servants. And he answered, I shall go. So he went with them, and they came to the Jordan. They cut down trees. But as the one, but as one was felling a beam, the axe head came, fell into the water, and he cried out and said, Alas, my master, for it was borrowed. Then the man of God said, Where did it fall? And when he showed him the place, he cut off a stick and threw it in there and made the iron float. He said, Take it up for yourself. So he put out his hand, and he took it. Now remember, this is God's word. This is not some, some made-up story. This really happened. There's a, there's a guy who's, who's using an axe, he's swinging the axe, and the head comes off of the axe. It goes into the river, and he panics. So he calls upon Elisha. Elisha comes over, and we're going to talk more about it, but basically Elisha comes over and, and throws a, a stick in it after he shows him where it went, and it swims back. Some version says, says that it swims back to him. You know, that's God involved in something like that, amen? That's God involved. In, and, and anytime God's involved in something like that, and it's recorded in his word, and it's, it's something that, that sounds so amazing like that, there's a lot of stuff for us to learn. So this morning, I just, I just want us to, to take this, and, and we're going to go through here and just go one verse at a time and just briefly take a look at this this morning and, and see the things that, that God has for us. So in verse 1, it says, Now the sons of the prophets said to Elisha, Behold now the place before us, the, the place before you where we are living is too limited for us. So these guys are basically telling Elisha that we need more room. We need a bigger space. Basically, Elijah was a, 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 a very effective missionary. He was, he was planting churches and, and teaching people to, to spread the gospel. And, and here these group of people, they, they knew who he was. They, they had seen him walk with Elijah. They had seen him walk with God. They, they knew that he had, had, had God walking with him, and, and they wanted to be with him, as we see through this story. And they need more space. Now that's a pretty... Uh, awesome problem to to have to need more space now for us some might say sometimes we need a, a little more uh space here these guys had a building project and some of you are saying oh lord what's he fixing to start this morning well you know what we need to start a building project i'm not saying we need to build a a, a bigger building because i i tell you i'm just amazed that this church started two years ago and and where are we sitting today God has, has truly blessed us, but we need to start a building project this morning. That building project, I'm talking about we need to be building up God's kingdom. We need to be asking God to work through us. We need to be submitting ourselves to God and allowing God to work through us to continue to build and expand his kingdom. We need to be willing to do whatever it takes to, to reach others and to, to glorify God and, and to represent him. We need to have a, a building project project this morning. And verse 2 goes on and it says, please let us go to the Jordan and each of us take from there a beam and let us make a place there for ourselves where we may live. And he said, go. <coughs> Everybody say this with me, uh, where he says, each of us take from there a beam. Everybody say that. Each of us take from there a beam. Supply that to us in our building project. Each of us take from there a a beam. He didn't say, let some of us, let the leaders take a beam. This building project, he said, everybody's going to be involved. If New Day Fellowship is going to be a church that, that glorifies God, if it's going to be a church that, that reaches people truly for the, the, the kingdom of Christ, then everybody needs to take up a beam. Everybody needs to be willing to be a part of that. Now, God gifts us all in, in, in different ways and calls us all in different ways. But in order for us to be God's church, in order for us to, to be the, the church that, that God wants us to be, in order for us to, to truly glorify him, who's got to be involved? Everyone. And this morning, as you look around, I, it doesn't matter to me if God's put you here this morning and, and you've been coming here. It doesn't matter if you're a member or not. That everyone includes you. God's got you here for a reason, and God wants to use you. It says for everyone, each of us, take from there a beam. Now, there's a, a, a lot of ways to, that you can, you can grow a church, and, and you can do a building project. It can be you can have a, uh, 
a, a, a bake sale. Uh, you can have a car wash. We could raise money that way and all that. You know, and, and that stuff does involve effort, but one of the biggest things that it takes to, to get people involved in a building project, and remember, I'm talking about building up the kingdom of God, is personal sacrifice. Personal sacrifice. Are you willing this morning to say, God, you know what? I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit of me for you. You see, Jesus sacrificed all of him for you. He gave his entire self right there on the, on the cross at Calvary. So this morning, are you willing to make a, a personal sacrifice to, to, to be a part of this building project, be a part of, of this, uh, this church continuing to, to grow and, and be what God's called us to be? And, and that personal sacrifice, it does include labor. That means there's going to be times you might have to, to be a, a part of, of some type of labor function here that that maybe isn't something that just excites you, but you know, it ought to excite you just for the part of being able to serve God. Sometimes it means that, and some of you have already made that sacrifice this morning. I know some of you didn't go to bed till two o'clock this morning, and, and I appreciate you being back up and, and being here this morning. But you know, it's not really labor to, to get up and come to church on Sunday morning. It's a blessing. Someone uh, shared last night that it's just their, their week's not complete and their life's just not right when they're, they're not able to come to church. And Praise the Lord for that. I feel the same way. Now, I admit, sometimes I'm just like you. I get up on a, on a Sunday morning. Sometimes I'm tired. Sometimes it's, it's hard to get up out of the bed. But you know what? Once, well, once I make it here, praise the Lord, what a blessing it is and how thankful I am by the time I leave that I, that I came. And I encourage you in that, and, and, and not just on Sunday mornings or Wednesday nights, but in, in all the opportunities for you to labor for the Lord, to, to do the things that, that God puts on your heart, whether it be directly here in, in, in this building at this property uh, through participating in something, or, or whether it means labor in, in you being out and, and, and reaching people for the cause of Christ. Sometimes it means that you've got to make a personal sacrifice in your finances. The lights don't, they don't come on by themselves. The water doesn't run in here by itself. The church has, has bills. Now, I don't preach a, a, a lot on, on tithing and such, but it's part of God's word. And you know what? God's word says that, that we're supposed to tithe. Not because God needs your money, but because God wants you to be a part of this building project. God wants you to be a part of, of furthering his kingdom. And you know what? That, that giving of your finances doesn't just mean here in the church and, and the tithing and, and the giving in, in those boxes back there. It means that, that you're looking for ways, whether it be, I don't know, funding a, a child in another country or, or funding a child in your neighborhood down the street. Maybe you look out and you know there's some families there in your neighborhood that are, that are hurting and they need some help. What better way than to, to show the love of Christ through, through helping them with their finances? If God has blessed you, that's awesome. There's nothing wrong if God has given you an abundance. It's what you do with that abundance and how your heart is about that abundance. And we need to be looking for ways that, that we can help others, especially brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to, to be willing to labor for the Lord. We need to be willing to, to give of our finances. And, and you know what? We need to be willing to, to be in prayer. We need to be, be willing to be in, in prayer all the time. I love that, that this, this person said uh, in verse 3 there, he says that, then one said, please be willing to go with your servants. And he answered, I shall go. It's a big project. They wanted Elisha to be there. He was a man of God. He was God's representation to them. You know what? If we're going to have a, a building project, we need God on board with us. Matter of fact, we don't need him just on board. We need him in front. We need to be following God. Understand today that God's the head of this church. And each and everything that we do needs to do, be done because we're, we're following his lead. Because we're walking with him and we're doing the things that, that God has called us to do. And, and one of the ways that we find out about that, just like it says that this man communicated with Elisha, we need to be talking to God in the same way. We need to be praying. How are we going to know what, what God wants us to do if we're not praying? And folks, I'm not just talking about me and Brother Dwayne praying. I'm talking about each of you. I encourage you, pray each and every day. God, what, what do you want our church to do? How do you want our church to serve you? God, how do you want me to serve you? What can I do for you today, God? God, how can I, how can I be a, a part of, of this building project of, of furthering your kingdom? 
And in verse 4, it, it says, So he went with them, and when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. So Elisha was with them. God's man was there. God's, it's like they were moving in God's will. This was a prophet of, of God, and, and, and they're, they're walking with him. And he says, you know, that's what we're going to do. Let's go. They go there, and they're making some progress. They made it there, and they're cutting down trees. Well, folks, at any building project for the church that's going to be successful has got to be one where, where God is, is leading the way has got to be one where, where God is with us. If we're going to be successful, now, and I know that you're saying, well, it doesn't make sense that the church would do anything outside of that. Folks, understand, sometimes we get caught up just doing church. Did you know that? Sometimes we can get caught up just, just showing up. Maybe last night you thought, man, I'm tired, but we're going to get up and we're going to go and we're going to sing some songs and Chris will get up there and, and say a few words and eventually we'll get out of there and we'll go home. We did church and it'll feel good. But there's more about being part of a building project. There's, there's more about being the church than just doing church. It's about having a passion for Christ. It's about allowing the, the Spirit of God to, to work through us. As we see these guys, were, they were making progress. The next verse begins to, to take us, in, and we see where, where things begin to, to change. And right now, I want to say that, that maybe that's where we are as a church. When I talked about we have a building and, and eight acres, and, and, and I don't know the number on, on members, but we, one Sunday we might have 70, and one Sunday we might have 125, 140 people at church. That's a blessing for a church that's only two years old. God has truly blessed us. We've seen this water stirred over and over and over and over. We've seen lives change right here. We've seen people come to, to God that haven't had a relationship with him in years, and we've seen people that have never even known Christ except Jesus as their Savior through God working through you. We've been blessed in that. These people were making progress. They were there in, in this building project. They were there and they were cutting down trees and, and things were good. Things are good for us right now. But we can't get caught up in that. We can't get caught up and, and begin to think that it's something that, that Brother Dwayne did or something Brother Chris did or, or something that you did. Because it's about what God is doing. And we have to keep that focus on God. In the next verse it says, But as one of them was felling a beam, that means he was cutting it down, the axe head fell into the water and he cried out, Alas, my master, for it was borrowed. This man swinging away there at the tree, can you imagine he's swinging that axe? And you know, if, you, if you've ever done that, and I said I hadn't cut down a lot of trees, so, so don't think that I, I know what I'm talking about, but I have cut I've swung at a lot of trees. I don't know how many I've really cut down. But when, when you get to going, man, if you've if, if you got a sharp axe and you, you start getting some, some chips to come out of it, it feels good, and you just get into that rhythm, and you, and you keep swinging, and you're thinking, man, I got this. I'm going to take this tree down. And this guy's doing that, and he's swinging away, and he's swinging away, and all of a sudden, woof, off goes his axe head. Now, if I'd have been there, I'd have probably been standing in front of him. I'm glad I wasn't there. But this guy lost his axe head. He, he lost his ability to be effective. He couldn't cut down a tree. How many of people in here, raise your hand, we had a bunch of, how many people have ever cut down a tree with an axe handle? Not real effective. Not real effective when you've lost your, your axe head. You can't be real effective. You're not going to. Going to cut down a tree. I wish if I had an axe, I would have brought it this morning. Uh, I've got a sledgehammer. That's kind of more my style, but I don't think I can take down a, uh, a tree with a, with a sledgehammer. That wouldn't be very effective either. But this guy lost his, his, his power, his ability to take that tree down. And, and then he's like, Alas, a Master, I, I've lost it. And, and even worse, it was borrowed. It's not even mine. So it wasn't even through. It wasn't even his axe that he's cutting the tree down. You know, again, that, that can happen to us sometimes. We get to making progress. God gets to, to blessing a church. God gets to working. You get to, to seeing lives changed. And, oh, you can, you can continue to see rows filled up and, and, and people coming and parking lots filled, but when we start thinking it's about us, then we've lost all the focus. 
And when we begin to take our eyes off God and, and we're just swinging away and, and, and we start thinking that it's about us, we, we lose our axe head. Folks, that, that axe head represents the, the power of the Holy Spirit in this church and, and in our lives. Now understand, the Holy Spirit doesn't, doesn't lose you. The Bible teaches us that when we're saved and, and we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that, that God sends the Spirit upon us. But that Spirit, it's the power of that Spirit that begins to be suppressed when we begin to take our eyes off of God and, and off of Christ and to begin to think that it's us that's doing these things. And when we begin to, to do that and the, the power of the Holy Spirit is not there, then the things we're doing are not effective. Our building project becomes stagnant. It's so important that we stay in, in tune with God. So important that we, we keep our acts sharp. And that we work in, in his power. Now, now think about this. These, these trees are, are growing there along beside the river. The muddy river. And, and his axe head just flies off. Can you imagine what went through his head? Is oh, oh me, it's, it's not even mine, and it just, just flew in there. You know, I kind of picture like the cold water river. Imagine being down there on the side of the cold water river, and you're going to chop down a tree, and your axe head flies off in there. Well, first of all, I ain't going after it because there's snakes in there. But once it goes in there, can you imagine trying to find it? So, so this guy calls on Elisha to, to come over and to help him. He cried out to his, to his master. Sometimes we need to, to cry out to our master when we, we lose our axe head. You know, one of the key things that, that will cause us to, to lose our axe head, to lose the, the, the ability for the power of the Holy Spirit to, to work through us and to be as effective as it can, is when we begin to let our, our pride build up. When we begin to, again, to think, man, look what's happening here. Look what we're doing. Sounds a lot like our country, our country that, that used to be a, a country that thought enough of God that we put in, in God we trust on our, our money, on all over things all around the country. And, and now I see that, that we're allowing people to complain because some, some sheriff's department put it on the back of their patrol cars. America that, that once was a one nation under God and, and, and just everything we did, we, we did to, to glorify God and what was an, an awesome nation. You know what? We, we were blessed and God blessed us and all that and we grew and we got greater and greater and we became the, the greatest nation in the, in the world. And then we reached that part where we began to have pride and we said, you know what? We don't need God no more. Folks, look around. It's happening every day. We don't need God no more. We got this on our own. We've elected people into political offices that, that, that have no relationship with Christ at all. Because we got prideful. Because we thought it was about us. Because we thought that America became great just because of us. You know what? There were some great men and women that God worked through to make this nation what it, what it was. And what it can be. And, and we need to be praying. We need to be reaching out to God and, and asking God to not just inspire us, but to inspire our leaders. And that we would walk humbly with God. And that we would allow God to work through us so that we could, once again, be that great nation. Now, we're still influencing the world. We're still reaching out. People look at us to see how they're supposed to live. But right now, we're not being very much of a reflection of Christ. We're not being the, uh, a, a nation that, that shows the world what one nation under God is. Matter of fact, we're showing the world about as, about as far away from that and as opposite of that as can be. What about, what about our church? The church in America. It seems today that the, the church is not as effective as it once was. Again, I, I think that the, the church help to, to mold and to, to build our country. And they're excited about that back there. <laughs> Man, if we just had that kind of passion at church. <laughs> but our church, the church in America, God's church here, it's not as effective as it used to be. Not saying it can't be, but God's church is, is not effective as it, 
as it could be. And I, I think that we have, we have Christians that are, that are out there today. They're still willing to work and they're still willing to do things, but they've lost, lost their axe head and they're out there and they're, they're swinging an axe handle and they're just beating on the side of trees. And trees aren't falling. All they're getting is, is bruised trees and wore out axe handles and, and bruised hands. And the trees just aren't falling. It looks like they're working. It looks like they're doing things. There may be a lot of them out there swinging axe handles, but the trees, they're not falling. Because they've lost their axe handle. They've, they've lost the power of the Holy Spirit. Church, we, you and I, right here in, in this room today, we need to be in prayer and we need to get back to God. And we need to make sure that, that the things that we're doing, that every, every program, everything we do, is in the power of the Holy Spirit. That it's God's will and that we're, we're constantly looking to him and that, that God is with us in everything that, that we're doing. Now, the churches have seen the, this problem and they've recognized, some people are out there and they're saying, you know, we're not, we're not falling as many trees as we used to. we got to do something. So they're taking their axe handles and they're polishing them up and they're making the, the axe handles shiny and well, that doesn't work. Well, well, let's teach them how to swing their axe handle better and, and they're training people to swing better. And you know what? All that's great. But they're still just beating a stick on the side of a tree without the power of the Holy Spirit. I guess my, my question to you this morning, what about in your life? Why are so few trees falling today? Maybe there was a time in your life that you were more effective for God. Is there a chance this morning that, that maybe you've lost your axe head? Is there there's something that, that's keeping you for, for being as, as effective? I think that, again, when I put this out there, I'm not picking on you. I, I think there's a lot of preachers out there that, that have lost their axe head. I think there are preachers in, in pulpits on this morning that are up preaching in the flesh. They're just doing church because they've lost their, their focus I think a lot of these, these people that, that we've seen, that, and, and you guys, I'm not going to name names, but you know who I'm talking about. There are, there are people out there on, on TV that, are, that, that make all kinds of promises through prosperity gospels and stuff. Those are people that they may have actually started out, and they might have started out with a, a brand new sharp axe that would cut through anything, and, and they've lost their axe head, and now they're just beating trees. We saw that Samson and, and Judges, that he didn't, know his, he didn't know his power was gone. He needed to, to sharpen his axe. You know, with a sharp axe, we, we can work a lot smarter. You know, a long time ago, you had to, you had to use a file to sharpen your axe, and I'm sure before that, you had to sharpen it on a rock. But today, we've got these, these fancy uh, electric grinders. Man, you can sharpen one up in a, in a heartbeat. You've even got them there cordless. You could have one out in the, in the woods with you if you wanted and, and, and sharpen your axe while you're out there working. You know, there was times where probably a lot of people had, had difficulty in getting their hands on, on God's Word. There's no excuse for that today. God's Word's everywhere out there for us. I bet a lot of you even got God's Word on your phone. And I know you don't leave home without your phone. You may leave your Bible at home, but you got your phone with you. We, we need to sharpen our axe. God's Word is sharper than any two-edged sword. You want to sharpen your, your axe this morning. Get into God's Word. Don't just wait till Sunday morning to, to break it out. Don't just wake up on a daily basis and, and spend three minutes reading a verse of the day and, and that's it. Take time for God in your life. Make God a priority in your life. You want to work in the, the power of the Holy Spirit. You want the Spirit to be able to, to move in you like never before. Then, you know what? Walk in the Spirit. Spend time with God. Start, your, start and end your day with a, a prayer time. With a time where you read God's Word. And look, don't, like I said a while ago about just doing church, don't just read the Bible. Listen to God when you read the Bible. God will speak to you. God will sharpen your axe. 
when we spend time with God, that's when the Holy Spirit can, can really move in us. Ecclesiastes 10.10 10 says, If the iron be blunt, and he do not wet the edge, then must he put to more strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct. We need to spend time in, in God's Word, in, in learning the things of God and, and having knowledge of God. We need God's presence in our life. Verse 6 says, Then the man of God said, Where did it fall? And when he showed him the place, he cut off a stick and threw it in there and made the iron float. He showed him the place. He said, Where did it fall? And he showed him the place. This morning, what if we did have an invitation right now then and said, God wants to know where it fell off. Where did you lose your axe head? What caused it? What was that sin that, that separated you from God? What was that, that thing that became more important than spending time in, in prayer with him or became more important than, than reading his word and, and caused you to, to lose that, that close fellowship that you once had with God? God says this morning, where is it at? Because just like we saw in that story, when, when Elijah said, where is it at? And he showed him, what did he do? He helped him get it back. It says he took a stick and he, and he threw it in the water. Again, some versions say that it swam back. Some say it floated. But it came back to him. You know, that stick is a, a representation of the cross. It's the cross this morning because of the cross. Because of what happened on those sticks there at Calvary. That you can restore your axe head this morning. That you can be more effective for the cause of Christ because of what Jesus did there on that cross. God stands before you this morning saying, where'd you lose it at? And I tell you, one of the, the hardest things we ever have to do is to, to confess our, our sin to God. Matter of fact, one of the hardest things for us to do is to to look at it the way God does and, and call it what God calls it. And if it's sin, you know what God calls it? He calls it sin. Is there some sin in your life this morning? And again, this is between you and God. Some sin in your life that you need to work out with God this morning, that you need to restore your, your axe head so that you can be more effective in this building project so that God can can use you so that you can be a part of it. Understand this morning, God doesn't have to work through you. He'll work through somebody else. But he wants to work through you. He wants you to be a part of it. Verse 7 said, he said, take it up for yourself. So he put his hand out and took it. This morning, maybe you've been, maybe you've been stumbling Maybe you haven't been the person that really glorifies God. This morning, God says, reach out. It's right there. Put your hand out and just accept it. Accept forgiveness through the cross at Calvary. And I believe that Elisha probably already knew where that axe head was. And I believe that God already knows what the sin is in your life. But when we confess it to him, it helps us see it and recognize it. And when we confess it and see where it's at, then we can repent. Then we can turn from it. So this morning, God offers you forgiveness. Just turn from your sin. If you're here today and you've never said yes to Jesus, you want to be a part of this building project, Jesus is the only way. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It's only through Jesus that, that you can have this intimate relationship with the Father. And this morning, I, I encourage you to, to understand that all you've got to do is just place your hand out and accept it. What Jesus did there on that cross was all that mattered and all that it took. When he said it was finished, it was done. God offers you the free gift of salvation this morning. I encourage you again, it, I don't... I'm not asking are you, if you're eight years old or if you're 80 years old. 
I'm not asking if you've ever walked an aisle in a church. I'm asking you this morning, do you truly have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Because one day that's going to be all that matters. One day it is going to be finished here on earth. And the decision that you make right here today to say yes to Jesus or to say no, it's going to seal your fate in eternity. How many more times does God have to knock at the door? Would you stand and pray with me?